You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. I love the detail of this question, Rob. Yeah, I do too. We always appreciate when question askers go into as much detail as possible. And uh, Grant has absolutely done that. So thank you. Looking forward to hearing the answer. Definitely. This is a great one. We're talking about the environments that we fly. This is applicable in very cold weather. It's also applicable in very hot weather. Now, a lot of people think that flying drones is easy, but this is one of those very specific details that can literally sink your drone business if you are not familiar with it. So I think this very particular point is one that's not talked about enough. I think we've maybe done one show out of 1600. Uh, talking about this specific issue, but not to this depth. So if you are flying in very cold environments, if you are in the beautiful Rocky Mountains or the subpar smoky, I'm just kidding. Any <laughs> not mountains at are, all. No, yeah, no, no, any no. mountains are good mountains. In fact, uh, my favorite part of I-40 is driving through the Smoky Mountains in North Carolina and Tennessee. So mm. that said, any mountainous environment, you're going to face this issue. Um, any coastal environment, you're going to face this issue. I would imagine even up in the uh, upper Midwest where there's a lot of lakes, they're everywhere. There's water everywhere. There's, ah, I mean, the moisture point. in the air is pretty significant. Very good point from our last conversation. Or the area, the 10,000 lakes there in Minnesota. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Yeah, let's hear this let's question. I think it. it'll be a good one. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. Hi, this is Grant Nelson from trfdrones.com. I have a two-week mission in northern Minnesota. It's going to be cold, and the dew points and temperatures are sometimes very close together this time of year. I'd like to hear a discussion on winter flying. A pilot should not fly when dew points and temperatures are within five degrees. Is this to prevent propeller icing, or is it a concern to internal electronics as well? Is this only a problem during either our winter flight, or does a temperature and dew point within five degrees pose a problem for some summer flight as well, particularly overheating? I fly an Autel Evo 2 Pro version 2. This drone's rated for flight down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Does this mean that as long as the battery is warmer than 14 degrees, all is okay? Or does the cold affect other factors in the flight as well on the drone itself? The mission is a waypoints mission, it's going to be in January. The mission itself is only a few minutes, but will be performed almost daily over a two-week period. I'm confident that I can keep the drone and battery warm in my pickup prior to flying each mission. If I can start with the drone and battery at 75 degrees, will that prevent any problems from either cold temperatures, which may be below 14 degrees, and the possibility that the difference between dew point and air temperature is 5 degrees or less. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grant. I think Paul's chomping at the bit here. <laughs> well, this is such a perfect example of when self-heating batteries are valuable. Okay. Because you only get, what, maybe five or seven more minutes of flight time on a self-heating battery. But in his particular case, how important is that, right, with with the waypoint mission that he's going through? And sorry to answer your question a little late here, bud, but uh, better late than never. Right, Rob? Yeah, I would imagine he's going to be flying additional flights uh, this winter because... Um, yeah, up in northern northern Minnesota. Minnesota. It's going to be cold for a while. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> grab your Toblerone and grab your gloves. You're going to need them. Oh, <laughs> my daughter just told me she wants to go ice fishing. Interesting. I, I've That's been thinking not the word I had for it. <laughs> you know, in all honesty, I've been really curious about that myself. Oh, because... good. Well, then you can take her. <laughs> oh, <I don't... laughs> Uh, do you want me to save her if she falls in? <laughs> just kidding. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it's a legitimate question, just Rob. Just tie a rope to her. <laughs> I mean, think ahead. <laughs> just get your 2,000 linear foot winch and uh, and connect it to her belt loop there, Rob. <laughs> hey, whatever works. <laughs> Can you imagine All me? All I know is I'm not... Forgive me. And, and you, you know, there might be people out there that say, you don't understand. You've never, which is true. I've never done it. I don't have any shit in, fly, in uh, ice fishing. Mm. In a hut on the I, lake when you it's know, freezing let's, balls. Let's turn this into so a drone question. Could you use a Splash Drones drone to dangle your hook into the ice to go ice fishing? <laughs> 
The answer, I would argue, is no, because of the dew point temperature spread, meaning that when it's super cold on a splash drones, which doesn't have self-heating batteries, if you were to actually get a fish, would you have enough propulsion to actually pull it out of the water? And the answer is no, because the temperature is so low and it requires a lot more amperage out of the ESCs to actually propel the thrust and the lift that's necessary in those colder environments. But it could be a real See, dry day. We just turned that into a drone thing. Well, that was fun. <laughs> but... Why do you have to use a splash drone? I mean, you're over ice. It's, there's no water. It's well, like, I mean, there is water below the ice. I mean, you're cutting out a hole, well, right, yeah. to go ice fishing. Small hole. <laughs> drone won't even fit well, in there. Oh, well, if that's the case, then go for it. <laughs> Z variables matter. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so okay. dew point versus uh, temperature, Spread. five degrees. Yeah, and spread. this is something, just so all of you understand where this question is coming from, this question is coming from our operations course. So safe drone operations for members, safe operations for props members. These are all the systems to memorize to literally avoid every single type of crash. Uh, one of those is if the temperature is within five degrees of the dew point, don't fly. Why is that? Well, when the dew point is that close, and, and you can get away with five degrees, it's when it hits four or three degrees deviation, really. Um, but there are other factors like wind chill, et cetera. So that's why we say five. That said, when the temperature and dew point spread is within five degrees, you get ice and moisture building up on the bottom of the props, typically on the leading edge of the props. When you are flying your drone, what does this look like on a cold day? This looks like your drone hovering and then just mm, kind of losing lots of elevation because the flight controller is having to um, kick up the RPMs of those motors to create the same amount of lift to actually be able to raise that drone up and down. You do not want to fly when the temperature is within five degrees of the dew point. The FAA does have a question regarding the temperature dew point spread, but this is a perfect example that a lot of the FAA are not drone pilots because they don't actually understand how this impacts your aircraft, um, which is when you're within that five uh, degree dew point, which they don't have a number, but in our 10 years, we have figured out that five degrees is that magical number with enough margin of error on both ends to work. The first question that this guy asked, which by the way, thank you, does this matter in cold temperatures and hot temperatures? The answer is yes, it does matter in both. Here's why. Who remembers the story of Sky Harbor, Sky Harbor Airport of two to three years ago? Do you remember this? American Airlines literally couldn't fly because dead Density altitude was too high. Do you remember hmm. that? I mean, I don't, but I believe you. So literally, the the American Airlines flights could not take off the ground because of density altitude, meaning that um, it was so hot and the air was so dry that the pressure altitude changed. So it felt like you were taking off at thirty thousand feet or twenty thousand feet. Long story short, is they literally couldn't take off because they couldn't produce enough lift at that altitude. Um, so that said. This uh, temperature dew point spread is very, very, very important, whether it's hot or cold outside, whether it's 78 degrees and the dew point 76 in a coastal environment or here in Colorado, temperature today is zero, dew point was one. So we're actually on the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay, we would not want to fly today because ice is going to build up on those props. You'll notice this undulating altitude on your drone. And the next thing that you'll see in your drone is you'll see a motor overspin warning or a motor maximum thrust or motor maximum spin rate. Uh, there's a couple of different warnings that show up. You should not be flying in this environment. This is also the environment that fog builds up. So whenever you have that temperature dew point spread that's really close, this is when fog builds up and you are not legally allowed to fly in fog anyway. So essentially what we're talking about is a very humid environment. Relative humidity is high. Yes. Well, I mean, we say a very, very humid environment, but this environment that we're talking about exists right now outside that garage door. No, I know, but I bet the humidity is relatively high. Oh, yeah. I think when I checked at home, it was like 90%. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, it's definitely a really good point, Rob. And, and at the end of the day, this is something that pilots really don't think a lot about. When you're doing your pre-flight, you're looking at, you know, visibility, you're looking at winds, you know, you're looking at uh, precipitation. Are you clear clouds? Those are all the things you're legally supposed to look at. But what they don't teach you to do is they tell you that dew point is important, but they don't give you a formula of what to look at. And that formula is a five degree deviation between the temperature and the dew point. If you are within that, do not fly a 
Again, common practical, what you'll see on screen is motor overspin warning. Your drone's gonna struggle to maintain altitude. You need to land. You're not gonna be effective in whatever it is you're trying to do anyways. Agreed, yeah. Right. And the Autel that he's flying is gonna have even more trouble than other drones. And it's not as simple anymore to just be like, oh, Autel, DJI, Skydio, blah, blah, blah. There, Skydio, and uh, in fact, I don't think I even know of a single American or domestic manufacturer or any manufacturer that complies with NDAA that actually has self-heating batteries. Which, in all honesty, that should be a provision of the NDAA, if you ask me, because this is all about safety, right? Well, this is, again, further proof about our regulators having a deep and knowledgeable understanding regarding drone stuff, which they don't. So that said, the only drones that have self-heating batteries, Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance, Mavic 3 doesn't even have that, okay? Um, the uh, other drone is the M30T. The M300 has it. Um, let's see... Um, I don't know of another drone that has self-heating batteries. So not very many of them do. Well, no. And, and again, to, you know, he made the point of Autel says I can fly down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Is the temperature dew point spread related to thrust and ability to fly or electronical, electronic and component capacity? If there is electrical charge running through those parts... You, they should still work. I, I would imagine that they would not be impacted so much by the dew point. But we do know that over 105 degrees in temperature, your phantom uh, sensors will fail after being on for about 15 minutes. Um, hmm. So that is the, the, the quest. The answer is it depends. Uh, but thank you for the question. It depends on uh, minimum operating temperature. I think the biggest issue, too, when you get in these really cold temperatures that he's trying to fly these missions, let's say he's got the battery issue solved. Keeping your batteries warm in your truck will help. You're still not going to get that much flight time because they're not self-heating batteries. But I can teach you a hack to that here in a second. You know, going back to it, going back to the Autel, right? It doesn't have the right self-heating batteries. If it's really cold temperature, even if the dew point is working, the other issue he's going to face is condensation building up in the lens of the camera itself. I've faced this on the Inspire 2, the Phantom, but that was more in hot environments mm -hmm. where you're going into a cold room with high humidity because of refrigerated air, you know, and then you're going back outside into the dry, warmer environment and you get that condensation. Yeah. And so condensation could be a very real factor. Now, let's give you a practical methodology of overcoming uh, battery heating issues if that is an issue for you. Um, let's say you don't have self-heating batteries. They're not over 70 degrees, meaning battery internal temperature is not above 70 degrees. What can you do? Turn on your drone, turn on the remote, uh, let it do its startup thing, fly to about three to four feet, hover, let it hover for a minute, land it, turn it fully off, remote and drone fully off, power cycle it, so turn it right back on, and you'll find that your battery voltage is actually higher than where it was when you turn the drone off, and the temperature will be higher as well. Go ahead and do your mission. Hmm. Um, whenever you're flying in these environments, you need to be watching battery voltage like a Hawk at 3.6 volts per cell. So if you're flying a Mavic three and it's only showing you that aggregate voltage, right? I think, uh, the other day my drone, my Mavic three was showing like 15 volts and I was like, Oh, oh, 4S battery, 3.6 times 4. Oh, 14.4. Oh, we're at 14.8. Time to land. So <laughs> you need to know the 3.6 rule like the back of your hand, and this is just another system that we've implemented here at DroneU that's a part of your operations class. It's a part of every props program because these systems work to limit liability, get drone jobs done, and have the confidence that they'll be done safely. I rest my case. All right. Well, Grant, thank you for the question. AskDroneU.com is where he asked the question. We love hearing from you. The show is for you. We need your questions. And never forget that whatever you're thinking, so are a lot of other people. So be the one that asks the question so it gets answered for everybody. A hundred percent. Thank you very much for the technical deep questions, the business questions, the mapping questions, the flying questions. I think it's become very apparent that it's not so simple and easy to fly. There are things that you need to know, but you can reduce those things down into systems to make it easier to just go out and have fun without even worrying about safety because it's pre-built into your mitigation strategy as a whole. Fantastic. That's going to do it for us today here at DroneU. Thank you again for joining us as always. We'll see you next time.